Namaskar. It gives me immense pleasure to inform that we are on the third webinar in a series of webinars on early childhood care and education. Uh, so first of all, I extend a very warm welcome to you, Professor Anupam Mahuja, who is now retired from NCERT, but she was the head of International Relations Division when this uh, was started, this MOU was signed. Uh, I extend a very warm welcome to our director, Professor D.P. Saklani. I extend a warm welcome to Dr. Leana, uh, head of the Department of Education at the University of Evascula, Finland. And the speakers of today, uh, Ms. Pia and Mr. Otto Virkula, who will be talking about STEAM. It uh, gives me immense pleasure in welcoming uh, our secretary, uh, Sri Sanjay Kumarji, Department of School Education and uh, Literacy, Ministry of Education, all senior officials of the Ministry of Education, heads of autonomous institution under the Department of School Education and Literacy, Joint Directors, Deans, Principals of RIEs, Heads of the Department of NCRT, Faculty Members of NCRT, SPDs, SCRT Directors, Diet Principals, CRC, BRCs, Teachers, Teacher Educators, Policy Planners, administer, Administrators, Parents and Students in India as well as in Finland. So uh, this is the third webinar I said. We had the first two webinars. One was the storytelling as a pedagogy for foundational years. And the second one was promoting play and play-based learning. Uh, so this is the third webinar. And uh, we are often asked, why STEAM? So as uh, we said, we know that STEAM, initially STEM, is science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and then arts. So we are often asked STEAM for early childhood care and education. So this is how naturally children learn and uh, STEAM is actually an inquiry-based learning for children. And we will be listening to our counterparts from Finland, how they are promoting uh, mathematics, science, how are, they, how are they using STEAM to teach children in an integrated manner so that they are uh, so that inquiry based learning is promoted and it is an integral so children don't i mean without really uh, going with the jargons of technology or mathematics children just play and learn and are benefited with that so with that i invite uh, dr lena who is the head of the department of education at university of evascula finland to uh, give her opening remarks. Me, I'm, I'm so pleased to welcome you all to our third joint seminar between India, India and Finland. And now it, it was planned that it's Finland's uh, responsibility to take, take care of, of this th third seminar. I, I think it's more than one year ago when uh, me, we met in Finland. We met uh, with you, uh, Dr. Anupam, Dr. Uh, Soniti, and Director Saklani. And when we discussed what could be the themes for, for these webinars, from the very beginning, this theme was one possibility. And I remember how how you say that it's it's something what you do but you would like to learn a bit more so i'm very pleased that now we are we are in that situation that you will surely learn something something more and i'm so pleased that that our experts Bia and Otto uh, can can bring their their knowledge for for you so today we will get answers to these three questions what is STEAM? And, and like you, uh, Dr. Suniti already said, that that's also a question for, for you. And, and why do you use STEAM approach to learning new skills and, and knowledge? And how to implement STEAM approach in the learning? And of course, our focus today is especially on, on early childhood edu education. And I'm very glad to introduce Two of our teachers, uh, Ms. Pia Parviainen and Mr. Otto Virkula. 
they both are very much involved in teaching STEAM. So I'm sure that that you will have an interesting uh, webinar and and uh, get insights how how to how to implement STEAM in in uh, early childhood education and how we teach uh, STEAM approach uh, to our early childhood education teacher students. I hope that that once again we will learn from each other and and I'm sure that there will be also time for for questions and and comments but I wish you all a very successful seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Liana. Uh, so, um, because I'm told that Pia and uh, Mr. Otto, both of them will be uh, doing this, uh, doing the session together. So I would like to introduce both the speakers of today. So, uh, uh, Ms. Pia Pervenin, university teacher and doctoral research, teaches on several courses in the early childhood teacher education program at Faculty of Education and Psychology, University of Evascula. She teaches the courses Mathematics in Early Years and Environmental Phenomena and STEAM in Early Years. And Mr. Otto Verkula is a university teacher from the University of Evascula, Finland, working for the Faculty of Education and Psychology. He's an expert in early childhood education and has extensive teaching experience in ECEC teaching children from zero to seven year, seven year old. So I welcome both of you, uh, Ms. Pia and Ms. Uh, Otto, and hand over the session to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Suniti, and it is our big pleasure to be here with you today. And uh, like, uh, like uh, Dr. Suniti already mentioned that we will be presenting uh, the topic together. And we also teach the, the topic together in our early childhood teacher education program. So we find it natural uh, to share the responsibilities and be here also together. Yeah. Thank you, Pia. And maybe we start with our presentation. I will share it for you now. Now it should be okay. Okay, here is a picture of a bridge here in Yvaskula, Finland. And I think that without these lights and this nice reflection coming from the lake, this would be just STEM. But uh, with, with uh, A, it becomes STEAM because I think the lights give give this uh, a really nice and uh, artistic experience as well. So it is not just a bridge that we can uh, come over and, and uh, reach our city, but it is a really beautiful bridge, which gives a reflection during the nighttime with these nice, nice lightnings. So Dr. Lena already mentioned that we have three topics today. So we will uh, discuss about what is STEAM. Also, we will explain to you what's the difference between STEM and STEAM and why we uh, prefer STEAM. And we will also give you insights why it's um, why to use STEAM approach to learning new, new skills and knowledge already during the early childhood education. And, and why uh, exactly STEAM. And we will also give you uh, some practical examples how you could implement STEAM approach in learning during the foundational years. But let's start uh, with the topic, what is STEAM? Yes, thank you, Pia. And I, I will start in this topic. And I would like to welcome everybody uh, for my behalf to join us. And, and uh, I must say, I'm already, I'm already uh, uh, a little bit sad because the winter is going to be over in Finland now, and there's 
kind of warm weather in in the in the, in the middle of the month. But but the, the, the weather observation are the steam and that that the spring is good point to observe weather. So what is steam? Uh, I will start uh, to explaining this concept. We have this S S steam. Uh, uh, sorry, science. Then we have a T in technology, and in technology we uh, we like to think it's re really really big subject. Uh, uh, of course, digital techno technology, but all, also the tools. I draw the hammer in this uh, picture because uh, I, I love these uh, uh, primitive tools and how to how to understand technology. And we have E engineering, and this. M. Mathematics. Now we have STEM. This is a well-known concept of all over the world, but uh, maybe some somewhere in the 90s uh, in the United States, the George Yakman the, started to promoting and add the A in STEM. Now we have arts included. And why? Why we have uh, this A and arts inside the STEM? Uh, we we are often asked uh, why why we have why why we have STEM uh, because uh, people uh, early childhood uh, teachers in the early childhood education they, they are often asked us that uh, we have already done this, but did they know they have done this? No. And STEAM give us some answers and tools how to how to implement the STEAM in action. But why the A is included? Uh, a arts, or well, some somebody might say it's A. A also mean all, but maybe we just thought now it's arts. In in the arts, in many many forms, this, uh, the STEM adds a valuable part of in STEAM combination. And arts in different worms allow us to explore uh, different kind of phenomena in, in our world. So arts is always in use. Like in, in, the, in the picture about the bridge, there was art included. And, and A, arts ignites the children's imagination and creativity, creativity uh, and uh, contributes to the development of essential skills like self-regulation, perseverance, independence, collaboration, communication, problem solving, my favorite, and critical thinking. They questioning the things. And uh, STEAM approach, now we have A in STEM. STEAM approach to learning describes learning, which is present everywhere in early age, like holistic learning. We learn in everywhere. Uh, we like to think it's um, like a, a transdisciplinary subject. Uh, uh, we don't have, uh, we don't separate math from the STEAM. We included it. We don't separate art in from from STEAM. We included. So in STEAM approach, STEAM approach, learning is ongoing and builds crucial skills for life. And probably with STEAM, I think, uh, like in the picture that that was our starting point, uh, we can see the beauty uh, around us in the world, no matter whether it's man-made or whether it, it's natural. But it kind of gives the different kind of lenses compared to just the STEM lenses. Perfect. Yeah. And A in STEAM. Uh, now we have included the A in STEM. So we now on we, we talk about STEAM. And uh, um, the STEAM approach uh, has proven that uh, it has long-lasting positive effects on children's collaborative skills, like social competence. And uh, as you can see in the picture in above, it's STEAM, not STEAM. <laughs> and we wanted to put it there because uh, STEAM uh, mm, uh, promotes the team work collaboration skills. 
And of course, team team approach breaks the sub subject and gender boundaries. Everyone can do it. There's no boundaries. And uh, also proven that the uh, STEAM approach strengthens participation within multilingual children. The worst are ways. Crafts in STEAM. Uh, children, uh, they, they, they have these uh, productive skills and they can design and do things. Uh, with their hands, with their imagination. So, STEAM approach underst uh, uh, promotes understanding of work as process from design to implementation, as well as experimental and explorative learning. So, as a summary, we could think that when we are talking about STEAM, we allow uh, broader participation for, for different kind of learners. Uh, to explore, explore the uh, STEAM phenomena, like Otto mentioned, that uh, participation is enabled better within multilingual children, but also like uh, boys and girls can, can maybe better participate, like, like uh, several studies have shown. So, so it is good that, that the options are better available then. And this is why we also want to talk about STEAM in, instead of STEM. Yeah. So let's move on. Or yes, let's move on. More. So uh, now we have given you a brief insight. What is STEAM and uh, how it uh, differs from STEM? And then we will move forward uh, to give some insights why to use STEAM approach in learning to new skills and knowledge. Maybe some uh, research evidence also were available, but now a bit bit more about this topic. So we could think that STEAM skills are actually citizenship skills. It means that uh, everyone in the society needs the ability to question the reality. We need skills to make critical decisions, and we also uh, need to impact to problems of the society by being creative, curious, investigative, and critical. And uh, we, we understand that when we use all these team letters, we can, in the very best way, contribute to our society and, and to the global world and the topics uh, we face together, no matter where we live. But um, how do we then gain these, these important citizenship skills so that we can survive in our lives, but that also we can invent um, new technologies or, or other things we need in, in our society? Everything begins with personal uh, importance. Something needs to be meaningful for me. It needs to be meaningful for, for yourself. So some, some STEAM interests need to be there so, so that you will get connected to the, to the problems and, and those might be also positive problems that you see around you. So you start to explore things, you start to wonder why does these things work as they do or what should I do to get things work better in my life. It can be a teeny tiny a daily thing you you come to face. Um, maybe you need to open a bottle without having um, the tools that someone invented for you to use, and and then still you need to know and and you need to get the bottle open to drink the water. So so you need to invent something so so that you aren't thirsty anymore. Some sort of personal importance. Some sort of personal interest and, and mean, meaning for you. And when you, when you face these, these kind of um, meaningful things around you that are related to these STEAM topics and you, you see that, okay, I can solve these problems that, that came, came uh, in front of me and, uh, and uh, I managed. So then this personal importance uh, gives you STEAM citizenship skills and also may guide the children towards professional choices. 
And this is important way, as we know that we need also people who invent new technologies, um, new solutions, sustainable sustainable um, issues are, are core no matter where we live. But everything again starts from the personal importance. When you are interested in STEAM, top, STEAM topics and when we include all these letters, more professional choices and opportunities are available no matter the gender you have, no matter the linguistic background you have. And that's why, why it's important that we use STEAM so that it is um, more inclusive. Then we can uh, provide better opportunities for professional choices for all the children we work with. And then we come to the third part, which is societal importance. Then we can innovate, we can create innovations, we can contribute to well-being and safety in our society and the world around us. But everything started from your personal theme interest. That's why we also in Finland have just recently published the STEM strategy and action plan. And if you pay attention closely, you uh, don't see the A there, but still we prefer to add the A part because of the research evidence that it en enables um, better and part uh, better participation for different kinds of learners. But this is maybe related to PISA results as well. Um, we know that in, in Finland, um, the PISA results regarding natural sciences and mathematics has, has decreased. So that is why the, the strategy has been originally invented. But we can still talk about STEAM. What this uh, personal and societal importance could then mean? Maybe you have played as a child with a toy windmill. You have been exploring how it acts when you run around and you have been playing. This has been pure play for you, exploring how the, the uh, toy you have, um, how, how it, um, what it does. So it has had personal importance for you. Maybe you have explored different kind of uh, toy windmills, the one with four wings maybe, and the one with uh, more wings, like you can see in the picture um, below the, the, the uh, upper one. So you can th then maybe have been explored that what are the differences with these toy mills, what are the similarities, do they behave uh, same, same way or do they behave uh, differently when you run around? And then from these personal importances, this uh, pure play you have enjoyed as being a child and hopefully you as an educator enable the children to explore. The inventions, uh, inventions, societal importance. Someone in invented windmill to be used to get flour. We have invented um, windmills so that we can uh, produce uh, wind energy to produce electricity these days. So there are many kinds of ways how, how we have learned to use wind forces. And from children's perspective, it's been play. And also these adults who have created these great inventions, maybe they remember also the, the ways they've been wandering uh, the world when they were children. And they have also needed the creative skills, uh, like, like uh, was mentioned that creativity uh, is needed when, when the inventions uh, take place around us. This is a good example how the arts and engineering get together. Yes. So why STEAM during foundational uh, stage? The ever-changing world and work, the necessary skills now and in the future, like, like mentioned. The citizenship skills, I think, is quite clear now for, for all, all of us. And uh, also, uh, based on studies, it has been shown that STEAM activities in early childhood e education have a positive effect on child school success as well. 
So in addition that we can uh, manage in our daily life, this, this kind of activities also help children to learn at school. So we shouldn't wait until they go to school, but we really should start to do a lot of things, play-based things with children already during the foundational years. So creativity and curiosity, like in the previous examples, those in encourage uh, the child to think outside the box and solve the real world problems or, or challenges. Those also um, uh, strengthen their cooperation skills and self-activity. They can do small researches together, being a real researchers. Then they can also learn a lot of things. They will learn a lot of things. Uh, peer learning takes place instead of uh, learning things alone. You can learn things with your fellows and those will naturally promote your cooperation and collaboration skills. Enthusiasm, fun and imagination. And I think these are essential parts. And when we are talking about play, it, it should be uh, filled with fun. It should be filled with imagination. Then the learning becomes become becomes meaningful and um, it also promotes learners active agency and their self-efficacy. A little bit more research uh, why, why STEAM. Uh, we, we know that uh, language is also important thing that we need to teach during early childhood education, uh, vocabulary, learning about concepts and these kind of things. But we don't need to separate these to, so, so that we, we would be teaching language as a subject. But uh, when teachers use a really different kind of concept, they can en enhance explorative learning and they can also promote, promote children's oral expression skills in terms of um, active use of concepts. So when, when uh, you as a teacher or educator work with children, please remember to actively use different concepts, no matter what you are doing. And especially when you are dealing with the STEAM, STEAM approach, then you can promote children's uh, language learning in the very best way. Uh, we already talked about a little bit about uh, the multilingual learners. And uh, based on research, we also know that explorative and integrative learning enhances learning of specific vocabulary within multilingual children. So it is essential that when we have these multilingual children around us, we would connect learning of, of the new vocabulary to their uh, daily experiences and when they are exploring the, the nature and the phenomena around them they will learn this specific vocabulary essentially well. Yeah, this, is, this is one of, uh, of the uh, answers to questions why we need STEAM, because we have already done that. But we need STEAM to, and to be aware of STEAM so we can use these uh, most, more, more complex concepts, more complex expressions, and teach kids, so on. Yeah. I will give you an example. This is related more uh, to mathematics, but of course, from the language perspective, learning about directions and locations is also language related. So when you work with multilingual children, or of course, when you work with the smaller children who can't yet um, uh, specify the directions or locations by themselves, you as an educator or as a teacher can name these things for children. Like in this, this picture, um, you, there is a, a teacher uh, with a yellow jacket. He could then tell to the, one of the child that, okay, hey, you are sitting on the rock. And then for the other one, uh, she could say that, okay, you are standing beside the small rock and behind the big one and I am standing near you. So concept, concepts become familiar for the children through teacher's talk. So the teacher helps to name, name these directions and locations, and, and these are immediately connected to children's experiences. 
instead of sitting in the classroom and trying to say which is big and which is small, then uh, these are connected and, and become real in, in daily experiences. But uh, when, the, uh, when the children are already, when they know these somehow, instead of uh, naming the things uh, by, by uh, oneself, the teacher could then uh, enhance children's or oral expression skills and, and ask, where do you sit? So then the child would need to name and say that I am sitting on the rock. So then they uh, start to actively use use the vocabulary and the direction related to directions and and the locations in this case by themselves so there are different ways how the teachers can, en can enhance children's vocabulary and learning um, science and steam related uh, specific um, concepts and and also like I said that in this case maybe more related to mathematics so there are many ways uh, why why are we many uh, explanations why STEAM uh, is essential part or in in early childhood education connected to children's life uh, as such, but then also thinking about the future needs of our societies. Uh, it all all starts from learning during early years. Okay, these are the two parts we have now covered. What is STEAM and why to use STEAM approach in learning new skills and knowledge. Some examples already given uh, that, that how to implement, but now we will move forward to this third topic that how to actually implement STEAM approach in learning. I recently got this uh, email message from one of our students and with his permission, I'm able to share this message with you. So like we started that I and Otto, we, we have been teaching in the STEAM course and now this, this one of our students was doing his teaching practice in Early Childhood Education Center and that's why he wanted to also implement STEAM topics there. But when he started to plan the things, he uh, came confused and that this is the message he, he then wrote me. Hi, Tia. I wanted to organize a science day in the ECEC center, but I found it difficult to identify appropriate learning goals for the whole day. My purpose was to enhance children's interest to watch science, physics, etc. However, I only spotted learning goals for mathematical learning from the curriculum uh, for the ECEC. Have I missed some of the content of the curriculum for ECEC? I don't know uh, if you have faced the similar kind of problems, but in, in many countries, we don't see STEAM as a topic or as a subject in, in our early years curricula. That is the case case in Finland and that is the case in many countries. However, um, as the idea in STEAM is to integrate different topics, several easy, easy curricula gives us um, um, kind of plenty of tools how this integration could be done. We just need to explore a bit how do, how do we actually find the STEAM from the curricula content. Um, for instance, in, in Finnish curriculum, we have these kind of topics in, in early years curriculum and also for the pre-primary education. So we have mathematics, uh, we have science and technology, maybe in some countries environmental studies are, are, are more common, science also of course, then artistic ex expression in many forms, music and, um, and um, creative arts and so on then language, uh, essential part, physical education, health education and nutrition, and then social studies. So these, these are the topics we have, and um, maybe you can also recognize already that the theme letters are there presented. 
but uh, physical education uh, what does that have, have to do with steam we will explain a bit more about all these contents that how could how could steam be implemented by using these different kind of subjects first mathematics which is the um, last letter of the steam but actually maybe if we think about the um, world around us and the nature around us everything kind of starts from the mathematics and that's why we also start start from the mathematics although it is the last letter of steam yeah, it's a petrok of petrok of steam and petrok of word yeah <laughs> and it also kind of um, enables to learn other steam topics so mathematics can be a way to learn art for instance but in, in mathematics, uh, the early years content uh, regarding the mathematical phenomena, numeracy, spatial reasoning, geometry, mathematical reasoning, comparison, classification, learning about patterns, learning about measurement, learning about time. You can see pictures that are um, connected to play. But uh, I hope that as educators and as teachers, we could use the real measures with children as well not in a way that we would uh, separate that from play but in a play-based manner we could uh, learn to measure things we could learn to measure time as well how long does it take take us from to reach one place to another how many uh, steps do you need to take to reach the place that is one way to measure things but of, of course um, we could uh, learn to use the, the real measures as well, kind of to understand the basic principles of measuring. Yeah, let me continue from here. Uh, after mathematics, uh, we, we, we will present your science and technology subjects. So uh, in Finland, especially, we, we, we use lots of nature. We, we go, we, we are outside every day, even there is a, such a cold weather. No, maybe there was, were a couple of days in this winter when there were minus 30 degrees, so so the children were inside. But but usually we are every day outside, so we use lots of environment. And and as you can see in these pictures, children are doing their investigations and they are playing. They have different reasons why why this uh, kid is using this magnifying glass. Uh, what about this other kid who is using a tool? Technological technological tool, a stick. It's really really good technological tool, and uh, they are wondering what they can find in in, in the in the, this ground. Uh, when we are living in the, in the nature, we go in the forest. We see the plants and, uh, and maybe some animals, and we we try to get the, also children to think about sustainable development and sustainable way of living. Uh, we are investigating about agriculture, how to grow your own vegetables, flowers, and why why we need those, how to make food from these, these own vegetables. So the science and technology is in, in, in our curriculum. Artistic expressions. Uh, you have to think arts really, really wide. We have music we have dance we have uh, uh paintings uh, we have uh, statues clay modeling everything is art uh, photographing and, and so on so artistic expressions give us theme about the rit rhythm it's music it's also in mathematics the rhythm preparing instruments you can do your own instruments you can be productive you can uh, you don't only have to consume things, you can make your own things and produce. Uh, you can do experiments with, with the paintings, with the watercolor. We, we encountered one uh, example where the teacher were, were give, give, give uh, watercolors to the children and they were painting on the wall and see how the watercolor was raining down. So they were experimenting about gravity. gravity. Yeah, and clay modeling—it's good uh, for everything. You can uh, you can 
make your own own shapes, your animals, anything. It's engineering design, product development. It's really important. If if some something doesn't work, you can improve it. You can make product development. Uh, in in arts, there are mathematical patterns. Voice voice is really interesting topic to uh, explore. Noise mixing uh, uh, mixing different kind of uh, materials mm. and colors and so on. For instance, uh, one practical example of mixing colors: How do we get green? That could be a problem to be solved together with children. Um, if we have three main colors, so how do we get uh, green out of them? So we need to mix uh, yellow and blue to get green and, and so on. Mm. So it can be art, but it can also include scientific uh, exper experimentations. And language. We have told us about, about a little bit about language, uh, uh, how we can find steam in language. We have these concepts, uh, vocabulary and multi-literature, how to, how to read your environment, uh, pictures, media and texts, of course. And how to search information, how we get information if we want to know something. And of course, we can also produce information. We can document things uh, with, with text, uh, with writings, with uh, pictures, uh, or, and with, with stories. And do you have anything to add to about language anymore? Yeah, I think that, that yeah. Is, yeah. And then, uh, Bia mentioned physical education, how the steam is included in physical education. But it's all about physics, it's all about uh, mathematics. Uh, if you are throwing and catching ball, you have to understand uh, how much the ball weight, uh, how big the ball is, um, uh, is it a really bouncy ball or, or heavy ball. Uh, it's physics. And gymnastics, you have to understand something about the mass, uh, balance, and so on. Dance, you create dance, it's arts also. Uh, really, uh, the, the, there's lots of patterns in dance and so on. Uh, movement, energy forces, spatial reasoning, in-depth perception and problem solving. That was the, this my favorite thing, the problem solving is everything. <laughs> you can live your life much easier when you have good problem solving skills. So physical education is something that we quite naturally think that we, we promote still children's uh, gross motor skills and their uh, movement skills. But also it can be connected to STEAM topics when we wander a bit to get together and when we solve the problems together. For instance, doing a somersault or doing a, a headstand, those uh, promotes the children's spatial reasoning and their in-depth perception and these can be uh, discussed also together and and when we do these these kind of things uh, with children we also promote their their mathematical skills yeah and technology is also part of physical education you you are using tools when you're playing some ball game maybe some path when you're hitting a ball or, or anything like that uh, and of course you can take video about your movements and analyze the video and uh, how you are move and improve your movements because you see from the digital tech through the digital technology how are you moving health education and nutrition you can see technological tool there when we are uh, making a stuff and when we are preparing some cookies maybe mixing here as well when we mix the ingredients when we are preparing uh, maybe cook it up or, or uh, we are preparing food for ourselves. We need to use our counting skills and we need to know why we uh, add two X instead of five X to the um, uh, recipe. And we also need to read the recipe. Maybe we don't need to read uh, as such, but if you have pictures, you can use the pictural reading to understand that what the recipe is about. And what is the order when you put the, what when you put the ingredient ingredients in? But also 
we can learn a lot of things about um, how to make a ginger um, from some from the ginger. How do we make ginger powder? And then we can use the ginger powder to um, get some bit more spicy food for ourselves. And then mixing the ingredients also, that is a good way to invent what happens and baking a good way to invent what happens for the dough when we put it to the oven. What does the heat do to the dough we put in the oven? Maybe it gave it a bit more color, maybe some other reactions happened to the dough to make it um, edible for us. Yeah, and, and we were wondering if we had is the reaction in the oven is it physical reaction or chemical reaction that's the cool question for you yes to solve. yes and if you don't know it by yourself you can also explore it with children and that is also a, a critical and important thing to keep in mind in steam that don't be hesitant to explore the things with children even though you don't know the answers yet by yourself, but you can find the answers together with children. So as an adult, you don't need to have answers already to, to use the same approach in learning. You can find those together yeah. with the learners. Social studies, uh, the final part of the subjects we are covering here. Telephone, mobile phone, device, how do we call these? today, what, but it, uh, in the beginning, we used phone to get connected. And there you can see um, on the left side, a toy phone. Do you no. all often know no. the English translation? No, but maybe you, you can understand from the picture that there are our students, they make the phone with the, with the tree, string yeah. connected to two, cup, two cups. So you just need paper cups or plastic cups and then a string that needs to be tied between the cups and then the other one talks to the cup and then the other one listens and there you have a phone and you can explore um, the, the idea of the phone and idea of how the, the voice uh, moves forward. But then, of course, in the social studies, you could uh, explore the things from the historical perspectives. What kind of telephones we used to have before we had these mobile phones we, we carry these days everywhere today with us? And like I said, that do we even talk about mobile phones or are these uh, di digital devices for us that we mainly use for taking pictures, reading news, using social med media, and so on? and then we use it for talking with each other as well. But when we have all this kind of content uh, we spoke about and, and we find from our curricula, how could we as teachers and teacher educators, how, how could we promote children's inquiry-based learning when we when we find that they, they find something important around themselves. So this uh, inquiry-based inquiry learning, which is adapted from Pedaste and company, it starts always with orientation. As an adult, of course, also you need to uh, observe um, what the children are interested in, to see their children's orientation, what they are interested in, then you can start to promote their ability to conceptualize these th things. You can promote their uh, investigation skills. You can promote their uh, learning to make conclusions about their investigations. At the, all the time, uh, it is important that you discuss with children, you promote their problem solving skills and their cur curiosity by discussing them and then Maybe together you can find also new orientations, new ways to explore the phenomena. Maybe, uh, maybe you were having a field trip with the children and they saw the windmills starting to ponder that what is the, uh, why, why do those windmills rotate? What is um, the, the energy behind the, them? What is, what is going on here? As a teacher, maybe 
you then thought about, okay, explore, let's explore this phenomena a bit. The orientation came, the, the interest started, and then you provided the children these toy windmills to play with. And maybe then the children themselves also started to wonder that, okay, what else does these uh, wind forces, wind energy do? If I blow, blow these seeds from this um, flower, what happens to them? How do they go with the wind? How do they fly with the wind? Maybe also you prepare your own toy meal, meals with children. Like I said, then the, the technology part uh, comes here connected. Also, um, then the ability to create things, the ability to do own, own toys, which promotes agency. And then invent different kinds of uh, toy windmills to find these um, uh, differences and similarities. Maybe you together start to ponder things a bit more that, okay, how have uh, people learned to use uh, the, the wind energy or, or the um, <clears throat> wind force, forces, airflow? Mm -hmm. And uh, you realize that, okay, we have hair dryers, we have fans, we have uh, dryers for the shoes. And you could explore that, are there differences or are they all, all the same? Do they produce the same um, amount of energy? And here you can see in the picture that there is a toy cat and then uh, Lego bricks. And with these um, fans and hair dryers, uh, shoe dryers, children could test whether, whether the force there is same or are, they, are some of the equipment uh, more powerful than others. Maybe this could, could lead to new explorations about bubbles and, and how these bubbles move in the wind. These are the ways you can uh, promote learning by uh, offering different kinds of uh, tools and, and uh, materials. But uh, it is also very important um, that as an educator and as a teacher, you also uh, promote learning with suitable questions. So in the orientation phase, uh, the suitable questions could be how can we find a, an answer? In the conceptual conceptualization phase, what do you think will happen? Why do you think that happened? What could you do differently when the children are exploring and investigating things? And when they are learning to make conclusions, shall we try again? And if the children are making different kind of conclusions, does he or she think similarly as you? And why do you think probably differently? And of course, it is very important to talk about together that what did you actually learn and what else comes to your mind? What else could be learned? So uh, it is very important that uh, to use this kind of framework to promote learning, but as important it is to support the learning by appropriate questions in, in different phases of this uh, framework. The wind is a really good example uh, uh, to explore things that you, you cannot see. Uh, the children get the idea that even we can see what is around us, there is something because you are feeling when you are shaking your hands or something. So it's a, that's the thinking outside the box. Yes. That is, there's something even we cannot see, yeah. So, and you have to remember when you are doing this, uh, these things and, and uh, using this interior-based learning framework, uh, this might be familiar uh, uh, for, the, for the teachers that uh, we have this zone of proximal development. Uh, by Vygotsky. It means that uh, what, what the child can do, what his pot potential skills are now, and, uh, uh, and what, what, what he ac actually can do. So what, what's the poten potential skills are. So we, we need to give the children uh, some support or the, the children give to the, uh, to the other children some support. And we have to know 
which in which, which phase we are in our development that uh, the support is correct that we don't give it um, um, too difficult tasks or too easy tasks because if, if, if it's too easy the motivation is gone uh, but uh, but uh, just suitable support for the, in, in 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 different kind of phase of phases in, in development so we have to understand that that uh, what kind of support we give. Uh, now we have some practical examples how to uh, how to use use this uh, everything everything we have presented in in this in this this part of our presentation and and uh, I have a, one example how to uh, document document uh, uh, actions with children when you are doing in your in your based learning and uh, this example is um, trip trip to the big hill or high hill and uh, the children were on the day trip they, they it was a winter and they they uh, climbed to the high hill near the easy easy center and after they have been been on the trip, they came back to the easy easy center, and teacher took a blank paper and started uh, having a conversation with children. What did we just do? Uh, where where we were? And uh, children started talking that they, we were in high hill. There was a big slope. Where you can slide with Liuguri. Liuguri is Finnish word. <laughs> in the picture, there is Liuguri. You can slide in the snow there. And uh, there was a kicker, like uh, they, they can make little jumps. And the, the, the slope were, were very slippery. There was ice and snow. But, but there, was all, there were, were also a little slope where you can slide with your palm without the Liuguri. And uh, they found some tracks and imagination. Uh, started to do the do the work that, that someone has been there before us. There has been a dragon, but but a dragon, and they they met people and dog called Walter. Uh, they saw lots of traffic. The airplane was flying, flying over, and they see red flag behind the building. They hear some sounds, and one of them was like an airplane. They found the food and stick. They were wondering uh, what what the birds are eating in the winter because there are no no uh, uh, insects and and uh, seeds <laughs> visible. Uh, how long trees they they saw there? And uh, in in the big hill there is a water tower uh, with the clock. Uh, they were wondering what it what it is uh, and does it really contains water? Uh, the Hariu, Hariu was the name of the, this big, big hill. The, the Hariu is a ridge from the Ice Age. And they saw when they came, oh, we were coming back there, there was also the bus stop sign there. So this, the, the, this, this were the observation what the children made uh, during their day trip. And uh, I, I collect uh, uh, every, uh, Every letter from from the steam steam approach here. What what did I I what what did I see in in this in this picture? And and I think it's something like that. Steam is everywhere when you are analyzing your trip and talking. Uh, you were uh, giving concepts to the children and uh, and having discussion with children. They they saw steam everywhere. Using the learning things with Steve. So this teacher, uh, her name was Virpi, and uh, and uh, he uses the environment really uh, widely and really rich approach for environment. So in an, on the next slide, I have four pictures, different kind of environments, and how to use use it and and what. What do you see in, in these pictures? There's a little bit sand, uh, maybe something like cell block there, window you can see through, but 
there's something behind the glass, but you you cannot easily go through the glass. And then there's a, in the upper corner there's a, a nice picture with the forest and the buildings, and there's also some maybe some boats and uh, and factories and so on. So different kind of environment. And now I challenge you to think uh, what kind of environment you live now, what kind of learning environment you have in your, your maybe in your easy, easy center or, or at your home, maybe. What kind of uh, environment you have lived your life? And there's this uh, four, four squares. And uh, as you can see, there's in, in the upper, upper there's a, uh, the number of actualized Afro dances, what we can offer uh, the children, how we can see the Afro dances in our environment. And uh, on the left side, there is a degree of independent mobility, how we can move in our environment. Maybe your environment, maybe your learning environment is like cell. The child's movement is restricted and prevented, and thus the upper dances are missed. So we don't see uh, any opportunities to use these upper dances. Or we are not aware of upper dances. We don't see it. We don't, we don't understand how to use, use our environment. And the motivation to move and, and explore decreases. There are many limitations. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. You cannot go there. You cannot climb there or, or something like that. So the degree of independent mobility is low and the number of actualized appurtenances are low. Then we have this glass house, the window. You see, you see many kinds of appurtenances, but they are not utilized. There are some limitations or many limitations that you cannot do, but you see, you, you, you see these appurtenances, but you don't use it. You can also have some uh, secondhand information about there's good good place to go there, but you don't go. You don't use the appurtenances and uh, and for the opportunities to have a, a rich environment. There are free activities and activities supported by adults, and they are balanced, uh, but they are mm, they are little. There are few of both of those. In the wasteland. Uh, maybe desert. Uh, the mobility and actions are possible, but the environment is tough. You can move, you, you can move and do do things, but there are not, not nothing to see or do, nothing to explore. Uh, three activities and activities supported by adults are financed, but there are the environment is tough. There are some restrictions, but there are few. So you can do it. But there's no no elements in the environment that uh, motivates you. And this uh, in this in the right corner, there's a baller blue It means a really really rich environment. There are lots of possibilities to for independent movement and activity. Uh, uh, and they increase motivation and environment encourages to explore things and uh, and uh, use your imagination here there are lots of uh, upper dances free activities and activities supported by adults are balanced and there are lots of activities there are limitations there are boundaries what children can do but there are few and they are mm, mm, <laughs> The, why they, they explain the children why there are restrictions, why there are limitations. Maybe safety is one one issue. Uh, I had an interesting uh, conversation with this uh, this um, table, uh, and, and that one teacher said that yeah, but we need all of those environments. Sometimes we need to have a wasteland. We don't always have to be so active. We, we sometimes need some space without any activities. We have to, we need to um, sometimes dullness. And maybe cell is all, all, also needed when you are going to some party or or some uh, mm, 
a really big event with uh, where you need uh, some code how to uh, how to do things. So there's lots of limitations, but uh, actually might be kind of fun still. But yeah, you can you can uh, now think about what kind of learning environment you are living. What what have what kind of learning environment you have constructed? And now I give one example. Uh, you can make your own assumptions for what kind of environment I think that the next next example is. But there was a hedge in the easy easy center yard. And here comes the children. And they asked or said or make make uh, they, they see this hedge and then wow that the water push push and right in our yard. And an awful lot of berries. Let's play with them. And here come the adults. <laughs> and he or she said, hey, get out of the berries, your clothes getting dirty. But then the adult started to think, wait a moment. The children found something interesting, which clearly inspires them to act and maybe explore. Could this be used somehow? Maybe some pedagogical solution. And the adults made this happen. They start to find information with children. Let's find out which bush is in our yard. Science, technology, they're using digital technology and books uh, to find what, what, what kind of berries there are in, in our yard. Could the berries be eaten or could they be made into juice or jam? Science, technology, engineering. And they, they were decided to make juice and jam. But how many berries must be collected from, for juice or jam? Science, mathematics. What else is needed to make them? What ingredients? What tools we do we need when we are making jam or juice? Science, technology, engineering. And of course, I, I, I have to mention in this point, they, they found out that the berries are eatable. They are not poisonous. <laughs> they were choke berries or aronia, aronia berries. And how much juice or jam do we get? And what do we do with them? Science, mathematics, technology. Could it be advertised and sold? We have so much juice and jam. Can, can it be sold or given to the families or, or, or neighbors? Mathematics, arts. This was a really nice example of how the teacher uses this, uh, this uh, environment, upper dances from environment to, to make really interesting experiment and included all the steam letters here and lots of more around the studio. So this is a summary uh, about this, this happening, choose from the nature. It was a nice project. I, I, I'm a little bit invite, envy them that they, they invented that and, and start to do in this project. So berry was, was growing near easy to handle react. Children were playing with berries, aronia berries, and it caused a mess and clothes were ruined. How to solve this problem without losing the interest to research these berries? They keep on playing, but encourage the children to ask questions about berries. So, kind of positive approach. Science, can we can you do juice from the berries? Engineering technology, what we need besides berries to do juice? Are there ingredients? What kind of tools we need? Mathematics, how much berries we need to do juice? And arts included society, can we sell it, can we advertise? So there's some mm, uh, there's business business thinking all, all also included in this experiment. This is a really nice uh, example of uh, using the curriculum in a broad sense. So uh, several subjects uh, we explained earlier that are that are written in the curriculum were integrated in this uh, in this exploration and in this uh, very project actually. 
So um, Otto mentioned that the STEAM lectures are here involved, but of course, like social studies were presented uh, in many ways, preparing the Jews, preparing the jam, and also um, organizing the food market, selling, mm -hmm. selling um, the Jews and the jam and, and so on. Health, education, nutrition could be connected, language in, in right. many ways also. So a uh, very uh, practical example of combining different subjects from, uh, included in early years curriculum with this kind of uh, uh, project that, that was um, done together with children. But also the inquiry-based framework and the wise questions uh, produced by the adults were presented many ways. Mm -hmm. So the adults recognized that children's orientation, everything started uh, by the children's orientation. Of course, uh, the first um, First um, idea from the adult was that okay, uh, clothes will get messy. Yeah. But then uh, he or she um, came uh, over it and then started to think about that. Okay, how could we use use this uh, great uh, observation and orientation for learning? And the inquiry based learning framework was used, and and many many kind of things were learned together and and investigated and and explored together with children. And I think this was the, the Eureka moment that they meant that, yes, we can do it. lots of things in our, our environment uh, when, when we just see it. And that, that's the beauty of STEAM, that it helps to see things to um, catch and uh, start to do things. And they have done a lot of STEAM after that, after that, the Jews from the Nature project. It was a maybe some kind of starting point and some starting point of new pedagogical thinking and and uh, approaches. Uh, so if we go back to this uh, table for everyone, there's some questions in these bubbles uh, that you should think and. Uh, To your easy, easy learning environment now, and think about this, these four, four affordances. Mm. How would you develop your own easy, easy learning environment based on the identified affordances in your environment? Do you see your own environment in this picture? What tools can you provide for children? play that support exploratory activities and inquiry based learning. And the tools, of course, don't need to be um, a very expensive ones. Oh. Those can, mm. can be anything can, that can be found from the surrounding and from the easy, easy center. Maybe uh, old spoons or something else you don't use um, anymore can be can be very good tools for children to explore the surrounding. Yeah, yeah, like like the wooden sticks. Yeah. Uh, I have I've seen lots of places that say that you cannot bring the wooden sticks inside because they're they're going to be a mess. But why not? Why why if you organize it differently, if you you don't like mess, but but you don't have to uh, make restrictions that you cannot uh, bring your wooden sticks inside. Maybe you have some another solution for. For this, so the, uh, uh, you don't lose your motivation. And maybe different kind of pipes and um, mm -hmm. glasses, everything. You just being by being creative, you can find the tools that could be used maybe for something else that than those were invented mm -hmm. in the very beginning. Yeah, uh, you need only one piece of paper, and you can do a paper airplane. Like yeah. we did yesterday in one, one seminar. <laughs> and what limitations of independent movement and activities do you recognize in your easy, easy learning environment? And how could they be removed? This is uh, for all for us to, something to think about. What we could do, why we have these uh, some kind of restrictions and limitations. And how could you use the inquiry based framework presented earlier 
uh, and supportive questions to promote children's encourage-based learning in your easy, easy learning environment. You should take this, uh, <laughs> this slide and, and uh, uh, take your time and think, think about this thing. What kind of learning environment we have and why we have this kind of learning environment. And we definitely hope that you will find ways to use the curriculum you are using with the children in a way that you could be inventive, you could encourage children to explore the phenomena um, they are living, living in and the things they are wondering every day when they come, come to your center, when they come to see you. Maybe when they were coming to the center, they saw something that was very exciting. And these are the things that could be then discussed together. And, and then finding your way as an educator or as a teacher to promote uh, children's curiosity to watch the learn, learning and, and to watch the world. And, then thinking about that, hey, how could I promote their learning by providing them tools to play with, to explore with, and, and then promoting with um, appropriate questions being uh, age appropriate and, and remembering, remembering the age group, group you are working with so that the, the things you would be exploring with children are not too challenging, but are not too easy um, on the other hand. And, and the, uh, the individuals you are having in your group, uh, maybe the ones with multilingual background, how to support their learning in the very best way, the genders you are having there, and, and all, all kinds of children, children you work with. Yeah, nice summary. <laughs> Thank you, Pia. And here are our references, what we used in this presentation. We thank you for your interest. And we hope that we gave you a lot of um, a lot of thinking uh, during this this afternoon and a lot of maybe new ideas how to uh, how to use STEAM approach in your learning environment with with the children you are working with. And we hope that these are the topics that you also talk with your colleagues so that you can also work as a team like we work here as a team. So that you don't need to be a, be alone with these topics, but maybe invent some new ways to teach in early childhood education when when you are inventing and exploring STEAM topics uh, as with your colleagues and with the children. So thank you. Thank you. Takeaways before I go to the YouTube questions that you have that we have for you. I think uh, you know what we learned is if you design age appropriate experiences for children, everything is team. I mean, we were uh, Professor Ahuja and I were we were discussing what is not team. So I think that was one takeaway that it is it it is all encompassing social science health. I mean, of course, five streams you already spelt out. And another, I, I think another takeaway is uh, when we give experiences to children, even when we don't specify that it is, you know, it is, it is mathematics or science or this or that uh, or engineering, but just the experiences, it is all integrated. I mean, for the sake of uh, saying you, you did uh, in that uh, Berry's uh, example that you quoted, you showed that how it is, it has art, it has mathematics, it has science, it has engineering, but we need not really, you know, um, always, uh, I mean, it is an integrated experience in itself. So it is an integrated kind of learning that is being promoted through, uh, through these team experiences. So just uh, my takeaway is... Uh, and uh, so, yeah, so you have. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more, uh, Suniti ji. And it was really a joy. Uh, our takeaways have been big. We are sure that the viewers' takeaways have been equally important. Uh, it was a pleasure listening to Pia and Otto. And also to, we felt for some time we were in Finland. 
we were with your children, you know. And, and the berries. And the berries that we enjoyed every day for breakfast when we were there in the morning. Uh, it does tell us very clearly, as uh, Professor Suniti just said, that uh, a teacher feels she can also think out of the box with the children. And I think that was a big takeaway, that we don't have to make uh, teaching and learning really you know, in we'll tight corners, children. systematic, time bound, in the classroom only, and making children uh, learn uh, the three hours before oh, they have they actually explored the world around them. So uh, the teacher is the boss, is a label that often a teacher carries in the classroom. I think what you demonstrated very clearly today was that every child also needs to carry the same label, that I am the boss. Uh, and when every child is the boss, and so is the teacher, it becomes a very uh, powerful learning environment where every child is able to say what he or she wants to say, talks about his or her experiences linked with his home environment. And I was left thinking when uh, Mika, uh, Thirunen, uh, the counselor of uh, the Finland embassy, when we were working on the MOU, he said, sometimes when I read uh, the Finnish national policy, mm, I have to pinch myself, uh, am I reading the Indian education policy? Because there are so, so many similarities. And that came through again. I was thinking of his statement. The way you're organizing things and the way you expressed your thoughts, our teachers have a lot to take away from what uh, was shared in the hour and a half. Uh, I'm sure they're going to uh, reflect on uh, the experiences. And we are soon going to have many children going to the uh, bush and uh, plucking the berries and making the jams and making their bread and thinking why, as you said, not two eggs. And why, why can we not add five eggs or vice versa? So, let them explore, let them be, let them have fun. And it is not only the children's prerogative to have fun. We adults can also enjoy education with them. And just like children look at each day as different, so can our uh, teachers look at each day as different as they listen to their children, observe them, plan with them. And the idea that it doesn't cost too much, no and low cost material can be a very important uh, source of learning. So you can just take children for a walk around the ECC center, collect things, and we can start learning and talking about uh, STEAM and uh, the approach. And that is a very powerful takeaway indeed. We were having a very important uh, conversation going on with teachers. And one teacher asked, um, interesting, what is not STEAM? So we were wondering if you would like to take that as what is not STEAM? And I think that says a lot too. That is the, that is the one thing I have wondered too. What is not STEAM? Because I see STEAM in every, everywhere. I, I love, love to think the, the, the learning is holistic. So that's why I like STEAM, because you can use it in, in every part of your life and uh, learning experience. So I, I cannot answer what is not STEAM yeah. than you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is a good question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Maybe uh, just kind of the first thing that came to my mind, what is not STEAM, is that if you just focus on one area and you are very strict on, on what you are doing yeah. and, and quite maybe narrow-minded thinking about through just one subject only. So then that wouldn't be STEAM, mm. but hopefully, uh, the and the idea what we were trying to give today is that when you uh, give, put the STEAM lenses on, you can steam, see STEAM everywhere and do everything through STEAM instead of not doing with STEAM and focusing on one subject only. Absolutely. Yes. Mm. So, uh, that's really a philosophical question. Yeah. What is that yeah. theme? <laughs> yeah. So with that, uh, I think I'll, I'll ask one or two questions which we have received uh, through the YouTube uh, audiences. So first is, please suggest some ways to integrate the discussion component of the inquiry-based framework 
with the mathematics question of the Berry Bush situation. So it is so suggest some ways to integrate the discussion component of the inquiry based framework with so so I think if I'll just explain they, they are saying that we, we did we I mean we said that through this experience we we, we could integrate steam but then to actually make that experience inquiry based what kind of discussions should happen between the teacher and the students or amongst the students to make that experience that berry bush experience inquiry based mm. so if i understood correctly uh, and i don't know if we should put the slides so still on but um, there were some questions maybe those were quite quickly went through uh, let me try to find those again so the questions that the adults were asking were that how much juice and jam do we get and what do we do with them so instead of giving the answers for the children these were the questions that the adults were asking uh, from the children could it be advertised and and sold and uh, how many berries must be collected for juice or jam and what else is needed to make uh, juice or what else is needed to make jam maybe then the <coughs> children produce the, produce the answers that okay we need sugar as well and what else they have seen that that is needed to make juice maybe some water and then we need the heater to, to prepare the juice and what like uh, there is the question that what what tools also are needed and then do you does something else comes to your mind no i, I just can show it so this, this slide where where there, there are these questions in, in our summary so the teachers actually weren't giving the answers for the children, but they were exploring the, the topics and together. And, and these were uh, examples of the questions that they were asking the children, kind of to, to uh, um, enhance the children's problem solving skills and then, then to explore and find, find the answers together. And mathematical parts, I think, were here also uh, included in when they prepared the, the food market. So that when they started to sell the jam and the uh, juice, of course, they had to decide that how much does each, each jam um, can cost, or or if you buy a bottle of the juice, how much much does it cost? And and when when the parents actually came to buy the jam and the juice then they were dealing with real money so so uh, instead of using the play play money they they were dealing with the real money and and then uh learning how to use money and then of course counting experiences were were uh, connected to to this uh food market experience mm. did we answer to question or yeah i think we try to I think yeah. that answers the question. Yes. Uh, yeah. So we, uh, we go to the next question, which is how can teachers balance structured learning and open-ended exploration within STEAM approach? How can teachers balance structured learning and open-ended exploration within STEAM approach? Yeah, nice, nice, really nice question, and and, and uh, that, that is also one thing I have wondered: what is structured uh, activities and what is free activity? Uh, how do how do if, uh, I can also make plans uh, to um, to give uh, children um, opportunities to have these free activities? So, is it free activity or is is it for my planning? That uh, uh, maybe it's some something related to these affordances that that uh, we don't all, all, always have to be in charge. We just have to rely to what the children can do by themselves. But we give them uh, the place, the environment, the tools to do it. 
to make arrangement that the environment is is good for free free activities. So uh, I'm I'm not sure I'm, I am answering the question, but uh, I see it. Uh, uh, they they go together always. Mm -hmm. uh, how I, I see it. If I give an example from the mathematical phenomena and what is known based on research on that, uh, we, we know that the best practices are the ones where child initiated and, and then uh, teacher-led activities are combined together. So I think everything is about the balance. So and, and what we try to teach should be somehow connected to children's lives. And, and like the, the Bushberry example, uh, try to explain that the children were interested about these, these berries. And then the, the teacher started to plan what we could do to promote children's learning, knowing that what are the contents we, we have in, in curriculum. So kind of the structured and, and then the explorative learning were, were in, in a nice cycle there but but also in a in a good balance if that that's uh somehow gives the answer yeah. as well but of course i think it also depends a lot on on curriculum that how much does the free teacher have freedom to plan uh, uh learning experiences uh regarding the curriculum they are using and we know that in in some countries the, there is a lot of freedom in in curriculum and teachers can invent uh, what they do with the children. But then on the other hand, in some countries, uh, the curriculum is more set in a way that the teachers will, will get uh, structured plans, plans that they, they need to follow. And then, of course, uh, thinking about the balance between the child initiated and, and teacher-led activities is something it might be different compared to curriculum where the teacher can uh, invent uh, more freely without having the, the structured lesson plans to be followed. Mm. So, so there are many way, many things that can also um, somehow influence to the balance that, that can be used with children. Yeah, one, and one, one thing came to my, to my mind was that, that, that uh, when we arrange the environment that the children can do and do these free activities, they have tools, they have a, a rich environment. and it gives us the place to observe what they are doing and then remember the zone of proximal development that we see that they, they can do maybe a little more and we challenge the children to do a little, little bit more so, and, and we, that, 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 that's where we find the balance. They are doing free activities and we find their, what they are interested in and uh, what they can do already but how we can challenge them to do a little bit more. Uh, important is that the diversity in the class get, doesn't really stand out because you are promoting every child to just be a child and there you know whether you are a good learner good normal learner you know all these uh, adjectives that we use for uh, children the, the ranking that we do tend to do uh, unknowingly and sometimes knowingly, uh, is also taken care of. So it also helps to create a very inclusive uh, classroom where every child finds his or her own place. When you're asking a question, there is no right or wrong uh, uh, question and there is no right or wrong answer. So you are just being inquisitive and you are just exploring. So you can explore with your own perspective. I think that's also a very important takeaway uh, for our system, that we need to bring in these attitudes about being together, being citizens, as you said right in the beginning, STEAM education is equal to citizenship. So you are also laying the foundation for uh, citizens with differences right in the early years. And that's the, the imprint that uh, a young child uh, can carry for life. And therefore, the whole issue of attitudes uh, that we have and we hold very close to ourselves about differences can get also addressed in a very unassuming and natural manner. Uh, every child can do it and the teamwork 
that's another very important takeaway and that's something I think our teachers will have been working on and will also uh, be very keen to take forward. Uh, perhaps I may also highlight one other takeaway from the webinar and that is that we are here encouraging uh, classrooms to have both the female teacher and a male teacher educator as well, you know. So I think the presence of uh, both of you uh, brings that point again very uh, subtly to our teachers that we, it's, preschools is not just a, a mother-like figure's domain because the father-like figure also needs to be, you know, visible and also needs to participate in planning uh, for classrooms Absolutely. in the foundational years because children need both male and female role models in their classrooms as well. So uh, unknowingly, perhaps, uh, you're, the both of you uh, taking this session, um, uh, both Suniti Ji and I and other colleagues will be able to say, let's think about this more. Mm -hmm. And uh, it could be a, a subtle message as well. Yeah. <laughs> of course. So and the last question for this webinar is, how to assess learners' learning and progress within that STEAM framework? Like, is, is there any difference or is it just the same assessment framework that they, um, that they are asking? I think all in all, assessment is uh, a lot, lot of re uh, related and, and dependent on, on the way what you think about what assessment actually is, what, what are we assessing. And, and in Finland and in our Easy Easy Teacher Education, we teach our students to assess their pedagogy, what they are doing. So are, is, are my practices meeting the needs of the children and am I promoting their learning if we're talking about the proximal zone of development, for instance? Are my practices uh, good so that, that I, I'm uh, actually promoting the learning on the, on the proximal zone of development or are my practices someone, somewhat some, somewhat uh, too challenging for the child or too easy for the child. And then on the other hand, we in our easy, easy teacher education, we also uh, teach our uh, becoming teachers to uh, observe the children and, and their skills, docu document their learning based on what they know what the child's development is. So, so they need to know uh, how children's skills develop uh, regarding mathematical learning, uh, what can be expected on cognitive development, what could be expected on, on motor learning and so on. So, so these are then the things that the teachers are observing when they are doing things with children. So assessment in, in our understanding is ongoing and it is based on what you do every day with the children and not something that you do just every now and then. Maybe you don't docu document it on daily basis, but no matter what you are doing with children, the, the example of the children playing in the woods and, and sitting on the rocks, uh, the teacher should know that is it appropriate that I I produce the words for the child that that I will tell that what are the directions and the locations or is it better that I will ask ask that where are you sitting at the moment so it comes at the end of the day it comes to the teacher's practices so I need to be aware of what I'm doing and I actually need to assess whether my practices are meeting meeting the learning of the children or not, if I answered um, clearly. Do you also have something you want to yeah, maybe, tell about assessment? Yeah, maybe I, I, I bring the, the individual, you know, how, how we know the individual skills and, and, and potential learning ob objectives, goals, uh, where the one child is going. And we have lots of the uh, discussions with guardians and with parents and we know also what happening in, in a, at, a, at, at home so we, we together we assess do, do assessment uh, uh, what the individual is learning 
and so we can do adjustments our our planning and our our uh, goals together uh, in the individual and with the group maybe you did get it <laughs> So actually, questions have started pouring in. <laughs> so, so this is uh, this is. Uh, can you please suggest some STEAM activities which can be conducted in ECC centers in urban settings? So, you know, like uh, we have this typical problem that we don't have bushes, we don't have like urban cities may may not be safe for the children to even go out. So in such circumstances, what kind of STEAM activities can be done by teachers in the classroom is what the question is. Um, of course, I think now we should know a bit more how the in indoor environment looks like that we don't know uh, how the classrooms look like and, and what all the tools that, that are avail available in the classroom. But like Otto mentioned that a piece of paper can can be an airplane when it's um, folded, and 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 then depending on on um, the tools that are available and the materials that are av available in the classrooms, many kinds of things can be done there as well. If there are building blocks, for instance maybe houses could be prepared those could be drawn as well to learn about three and two dimensionality uh, learn about arts and and maybe use even watercolors to do do different kind of buildings and so on so depending on the the materials that are available indoors of course plenty of things can can be done in indoors as well yeah so just to add on to uh, sorry sorry yeah go go on please Go on, please. Uh, I was just saying that uh, if you want to get to know some materials found in the nature, you can do this uh, inside or in, in, in a yard. You can do it with, with, uh, with sand, different kind of um, experiments and with, with the clay modeling. And uh, so you can get to know uh, these elements, elements in, uh, in the nature, like water, uh, sand fire and uh, air uh, and you can do this exploration in inside uh, and uh, we are sorry <laughs> because we are we're talking about in this Finnish, uh, Finnish context and we have this nature really near us <laughs> actually in, in every corner in, in Finland but uh, uh, we also think about this urban or, or urban um, environments how to um, do the trips in, in the cities and how to explore the buildings, like like buildings, in in the steam steam uh, perspective, but uh, yeah. And may to just add a bit that uh, if these cones and sticks and and things like that could be brought inside and and the children could explore these indoors and and water play is something if we are talking about the challenges in Finland, for instance. That we don't too often see water play indoors and like Otto said that now we are waiting for the spring term the winter winter term is is about to finish soon but during the winter time uh, the children in Finland don't have that many opportunities to play with with uh, cones and and with sticks and and so on and this is something that I I think we we in Finland need to think about that how could we then take these kind of uh, explorative material indoors during the winter time that we would also allow this kind of play also during winter in, in indoors. Yeah. So I think uh, just to add on to the, for the for the sake of the audiences, I, I think we do a lot of sinking, floating activities, blowing that uh, that water bubbles. The filling up the balloon and uh, you know so all of those activities are again steam activities where around which a lot of discussion ha can happen so planting a, a sapling and then letting it uh, seeing it grow germination of seeds so a lot of activities I think can be done um, within the classroom in, in the urban settings also so just uh, my last uh, every time I say my last comment but then another question comes in so my last question to you Pia and Otto is that if the audiences want to refer to 
or maybe look at some videos? Do you have some resources, some guidelines, some, some uh, you know, like uh, uh, the national guidelines or something, some kind of uh, a resource that our audiences can refer to if they want to use this team approach? Mm. Like I said that in Finland, uh, neither we have uh, STEAM, STEAM uh, written in, in our curriculum, uh, so we also need to uh, somehow invent a bit where to find uh, good resources. But I would say that uh, maybe the McNerney at Hall, uh, the, the questions that they have uh, proposed that could be used with children, that is in the reference list. If Otto, you could please share the slide. That is something uh, quite um, handy and I think very easy, easy way to take with, uh, because it gives ideas how can you uh, promote children's creativity, their autonomy, and, and their experiential learning. So this McNerney at, at Hall, which can be uh, found, I think it is uh, open access open access material. So, so there are plenty of plenty of questions that could be used with children and also this um, inquiry-based model, model framework also, there is a, a bit broader picture of that. We, we uh, slightly modi modified it here to uh, make it a little bit uh, simpler. But uh, that is also something that, that could be explored and then thinking about how to take it away with and, and how to use it uh, in own work. These are things that come to, come to my mind quickly that are that there are parts that can be easily reached uh, without need to be researcher, but, but like I said, that the question or a framework is, is very, very practical tool for teachers to take with. Does something else come uh, to your mind? No, no, I don't have anything to add. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So now I go to you, Professor Rahuja, for giving your final well, remarks. These, uh, <clears throat> we can go on, as we have demonstrated for a long time, but I will try to conclude in the next minute or so and say that the three webinars have been really very powerful learning experiences for both of us. Uh, and the MOUs uh, becoming real through these webinars, you know, it's getting translated into action. And we are, being go we are going to use these uh, clippings from the presentations in training programs to continue to think together. Uh, and sh we will share with you our learnings from uh, what we get from the diversity that exists in our country. And I'm sure we will uh, be enriched, enriching each other uh, because our teachers uh, have been using STEAM without really giving it the label sometimes, you know, of understanding that this is the STEAM approach. But they've been practicing it for many, many years unknowingly. And today's uh, discussion, uh, puts a label on and an authenticity on what they are doing. So uh, we are very happy to have uh, this interaction going, and we hope uh, to continue uh, uh, seeing how the MOU unfolds further and brings the uh, uh, two countries, of course, closer, children closer to each other, teachers closer to each other, and improving uh, good citizens in this world torn currently with war and a lot of inequality. There's lots to look forward to uh, uh, by all of us. And thank you very much for the ease with which we planned uh, these three uh, webinars. It was really a joy to be part of it. And uh, Professor Sumiti uh, took the blunt of all the organization. Uh, and a uh, big thank you to both Lina and Suniti. Uh, G for uh, bringing this uh, together for all of us. So a pleasure and bye-bye till we meet again. So thank you, Professor Huja. So uh, I think I start with thanking uh, Pia and uh, Otto for this wonderful session. Thank you to you, Professor Huja, for always uh, being here and be a part of these webinars. I thank uh, the director and I thank everybody who has tuned in and who are with us for this webinar. Namaskar. Yeah.
we also want to uh, give our big 